Lately, I've been checking out Motion VFX M Roto AI for Final Cut, and what? It's pretty mind blowing and is really something that Final Cut has been crying out for. So, in this video, I want to show you what it is, plus what it can do, and how you can use it. Onward. I've timestamped everything in this video down below so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no trouble at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just take a second to reach down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, it really just helps the channel out massively, puts a smile on my face and I thank you in advance. This is not sponsored content but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear to review and then I do an unbiased review review and give the gear to my backers, so it really is just win-win. Um, if that's of interest, do check it out, it's all linked below. So what is MRoto AI exactly? What's its purpose? I'm aware that you know not everyone out there will be aware of what rotoscoping is, or Roto for short. I will say that I think the name MRoto AI is perhaps not the best for this product just because you know, uh, its primary function, its most basic function, is to create tracked masks, and rotoscoping is something that's slightly different. Rotoscoping itself is actually something that's been around for a while. It's where animators trace over live action footage frame by frame. Imagine taking a video of someone dancing, for example, and then you draw over each frame of that dance. What you end up with is a kind of super smooth, realistic animation that still looks hand-drawn. It's an arduous task, as you can imagine, and its original purpose really was to be used for cartoons. And, uh, you know, it actually is, you know, the, the real kind of bedrock of how Disney used to operate. However, it's not just for cartoons, of course. Filmmakers use rotoscoping for visual effects as well. The best example of this, I think, is the lightsabers in Star Wars. Yep, indeed. Rotoscoping. So MRoto AI is actually more a way of just really quickly and efficiently creating tracked masks because you know what? It's rather smart software. Final Cut Pro being my favourite software for video editing and just because of its um, ridiculously fast workflow, you know, the magnetic timeline, and it's just really intuitive to use. It really has been lagging behind, and I'm sure DaVinci Resolve users will be the first to point this out. Um, you've been lagging behind with uh, the tracked masks side of things. Yes, technically it does have this now, but to be honest, I've always found it super clunky and time consuming and also not always that accurate. Anyway, now let me show you the features you get with MRoto AI and the best way to do that really is just to give you a little guided tour. So here we are in Final Cut and I will say this is an absurdly easy plugin to use. When you install it, you'll notice down in your effects browser you've got two new tabs. There's the MRoto AI tab and then the extensions tab. So of course we want to drop an instance of MRoto AI onto our clip and then we get a very simple control panel with really not very many controls. Firstly we have the output and this determines how our mask is displayed and I will show you this in just a bit. And then we have precision and there's three settings. Honestly I would advise just always using accurate because yes it takes a little bit longer but you know I'd rather have a more accurate mask that's just me and then these three sliders smoothness shrink expand and blur all affect the edges of your mask and I'll demonstrate that in just a second invert mask pretty self-explanatory and anti-alias I would just say leave on you'll also notice there's a little widget just to the left of our screen and this gives us a few controls for drawing our mask there's a kind of magic drawing tool and then a paint tool and the same goes for the eraser I like the magic version it's just really quick I'm just going to draw around the subject which is me I've done it quite roughly and it's pretty good I just have to fill in the blanks now and pretty quickly you'll see it's done a pretty nice job of finding the edges. Next we need to track our mask and that's as easy as clicking tracker and then hitting either forwards or backwards. You just need to make sure you do the whole clip. Once that's done we'll have a really nice mask and notice that the plugin has recognized when my arm moves away from my t-shirt and it leaves that bit out of the mask. That is super smart. I like to check the edges of our mask to see if it's looking natural. So I've just added a random picture as a layer underneath our main clip. And you can see when I change the output, the effect that it has, you can go to mask only, just the mask on its own without 
the background, and then the original video with no mask. And this is the point in which I would play with these three sliders to make sure that the edges of my mask look really natural, and you probably want to add a little bit of all of these, because otherwise it just looks too sharp and, you know, life isn't sharp. And that's kind of it. It's super easy. The possibilities really are endless with this. I could mask myself out of this frame and then maybe add Final Cut's cartoon effect and then bam! It kind of looks like I'm straight out of a comic strip. A bit like, uh, what's that music video? Aha, you know, take on me. A bit like that. And then take this guy. This was for a music video that I shot recently and the masking was quite tricky due to him holding a ladder and the motion blur, but I got it done fairly roughly and Mroto actually tracks it pretty well. Like I said, this was a challenge for Mroto. Then I can insert him into another space. This is a sloppy looking example as it was just existing footage to show you what's possible. And then why not have him followed by an army of other guys carrying ladders and doing crazy things? Seriously, the additional effects you get with this plugin, I just think are so cool. But next, let's do a more practical example, shall we? Let's remove this boat that we can see in the background. So I'm gonna duplicate my shot and then zoom in because this is quite a small subject. I'm gonna select accurate because I just find, you know, obviously the results are more accurate. So I just like using that all the time. And then I'm gonna select the subject, play with the shrink, expand the smoothness just to get the best looking mask I can. We can adjust it later, of course. Do the track forward and track backwards. I'm then going to invert the mask. So the top layer essentially will just have a little hole in it. I've disabled the bottom layer, of course, just to demonstrate this. But then with the bottom layer re-enabled, I'm going to then move it just to the left or right to hide where the hole was. Lastly, we can just see the edges of the boat, and so I'm just going to do a few more minor adjustments just to make sure that it's well hidden and well blended. And there we have it, there's our original shot with the boat, and then boom, the boat is gone. Super useful, this. Next, another practical application of this, and I've got this shot from a music video that I filmed recently, and this is with a 20mm lens, and I'd quite like a little bit more background blur, so let's make that happen. So again, I select and mask our subject. It was a little bit more tricky just because there's a lot of areas that are pretty dark in this scene, but for the purpose of selecting our subject and blurring the background, this is going to be okay if it's not absolutely perfect. But Emroto AI still did a really impressive job tracking the subject all the way through the scene. Just as a little pit stop here, I did get a little carried away by adding some cool effects like this glitch effect to our subject. These are a lot of fun. Anyway, moving on, I've now added a Gaussian blur effect to our bottom layer. And as you can see, something is up with the mask. It's not quite fitting perfectly. Plus that is way too much blur and it's just not realistic looking. So by adjusting the three controls, I can make it look like a really seamless uh, transition there between the subject and the background and adding the right amount of blur to sell the effect is important too. Anyway, again, here's the before. This gives us a lot of context in the scene with the background being relatively in focus. And then here's our version with the background out of focus. I love this. I think it looks really realistic. I don't think it's gone beyond where you can really tell that it's an effect. Super cool. As for the user interface side of things, uh, do you know what? I found it uh, overall extremely easy to use with just one kind of hitch and that's, that occasionally on subjects with a lot of motion blur or subjects with not much contrast or different colors, it sometimes struggles to find, uh, you know, if it's a really intricate subject, I'm really thinking of, you know, the guy where the pink ladder against, you know, quite a, a brightly lit background. It just had trouble um, isolating the ladder and understandably so. Now you can combat that of course by shooting in slightly higher shutter speeds to kind of uh, reduce the, the motion blur. And, you know, you can make sure that there's, there's more contrast with uh, the background and the subject and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, of course that all takes more forward planning. You have to really uh, plan to shoot uh, something that you know is gonna be tracked. Um, so bear that in mind, otherwise this is just extremely easy and just a joy to use. Moving on to value for money and let's deal with the elephant in the room. And that of course is that this is not available as a standalone plugin. I really wanted to buy this plugin outright, but unfortunately it's only available as part of Motion VFX's Cine Studio bundle, which is a subscription model. And I'm sure this will induce 
many a comment saying, Subscription model, no thanks! And I feel that. I also have, you know, subscription model fatigue, I think it's being called. Um, but you know what? It's not kind of outrageously expensive and you know it does come with some other cool things too like M Film Look which I reviewed previously and loved and M Tracker Surface which I've not yet tried but have heard that it's unbelievable. So really this is going to appeal to editors who stubbornly love Final Cut like myself and require this kind of functionality on a regular basis and can factor in the cost when it comes to invoicing clients. Anyway, moving on to my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, this is tracking like we've never seen and never had in Final Cut, and you got to love that. It's just brilliant. I love the easy user interface and pleasing user experience. Before having this software, when I had to do anything with a tracked mask, I kind of always had a heart sinking moment knowing that I'd have to use Final Cut's inbuilt tracking and no more. The workflow when using this is ridiculously fast and I really appreciate that, you know, time is money for so many video guys. So in a way, if this saves you time and, you know, can save you an hour or two, perhaps that makes up for the, you know, the cost of the subscription model. The bonus effects, subjectively, are great. I think they're really funky and I can definitely see myself using this when shooting something like a music video in future. And then the cons, and we'll start with the obvious one that this is only available with Cine Studio, which of course, as I mentioned, is a subscription model. Also, you'll find the best results are when subjects are in high contrast and with differing colors from the background. This means, you know, you can expect varying success. You'll really get better results when using faster shutter speeds. And that, of course, is to cut down on motion blur. And that takes some forward planning. And of course, less motion blur sometimes just doesn't look as real or cinematic. Finally, to my opinion, and Mroto is just so smart. It is so simple and it unlocks tracked masking like we've never had in Final Cut before. I love the bonus effects as well. I can see myself using them for uh, quite a few different occasions. I mean, but in particular, I think music videos uh, for you know genres like pop and maybe rap, that kind of thing. Um, there's, there's a lot of use. The downsides are obvious, but you know, relatively minor depending on your situation. You know, there's the subscription model, which, you know, I've mentioned enough now. <laughs> There's the fact that um, sometimes with really uh, with low contrast subjects, it can it can struggle to isolate the exact uh, perimeter of it, and then also when it comes to sort of differing colors, it needs it needs contrast in luma and saturation and and that kind of thing um, to really get the best results. Of course, one thing I'd say is always use accurate mode. I know it's a little bit slower, but you know for the sake of a, a better mask, why wouldn't you? Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you agree? Have you tried this software? What do you think? Um, I want to know. I'll see you down in the comments and um, I'm down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which Google's algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.